I do find it fascinating that racist liberal whites seem to love them some Bernie Sanders consistently and always have a problem with any person of color who doesn't want to follow with the orthodoxy of their Lord and Savior Bernie Sanders. The man cares nothing for intersectionality. And I don't care how many people from the island of misfit black girls that you throw out to defend you on a regular basis. Okay. It All doesn't right. mean that That's your campaign you is serious. Pro- All right. I won't be before you long, but I want to address the situation right now. Um, Jason Johnson is getting the smoke. This is not his first time being in the media, saying some incendiary things. He's been on Karen Hunter. He called Tulsi Gabbard a Russian spy, baby child, poster girl, whatever. He's attacked black voters. He got in trouble not that long ago because he made a valid point. And Tiffany Cross, who talks mad funny, um, she's on uh, Twitter defending him. Because it was her point she made about how Kamala Harris won't be able to do well with her white husband and the fact that she's attached to policy that has affected black men in California and she's going to have to have a black male ally, which is all optics and whatever, like it's politics, right? You might not like what he said, but what he said is it had validity because Kamala's at home with her her, her white husband. Um, but Tiffany Cross is on on Twitter defending him saying he made a mistake and he it's funny as fudge, right? It's funny how... When someone on the left does this nonsense, it's, oh, there's context, and there's there's meaning, and if you watch the full video, you understand. Like, no, this is what y'all do. Y'all do the identity politics things, y'all, which I dislike, and I don't like when anybody does it, particularly when the left does it, is a man will have a beef with a female, and instead of addressing that beef from them one person to person, y'all jump and tag team the whole race in. And I, I'm surprised that Senator Nina Turner did that because she hopped on a bandwagon on Twitter and she jumped in on it talking about us. And, like, there's a whole feed. And I don't know if I'm repeating myself because I have another clip that I did reload after this. But um, there's a whole feed of a bunch of black women who are Bernie Sanders supporters. And they're all like, yeah, you're coming at us island of misfit black girls and blah, blah, blah. Again, I don't like to do Jason at all. He's a dickhead. But... I understand in context what he was saying. Even the debate he had with Nina Turner about calling Mike Bloomberg an oligarch. Yes, Mike Bloomberg is an oligarch. But what Jason was saying is, y'all gonna need his oligarch money. And Bloomberg has already committed to giving a lot of money to the DNC. And I don't know if Great Joy, the chick that got the name from Silent Chief from Game of Thrones, she said that they won't be taking any PAC money and they won't be taking any Bloomberg money. But the reality is that Trump, has like 180 million dollars with the RNC combined, and the Democrat only got like eight mil. Um, Hillary broke them. Obama Obama broke them. Hillary had to use a lot of her own money. That's probably hopefully that's part of why she lost. She had that bag, and they're gonna need the money. So I understood Jason Johnson's like, yo, you gotta chill with the optics. We can't be calling this man an oligarch. We, need, we gonna need his money in the future. And he's playing his little game that Angela Rye played right when she was on CNN all the time. Like she wasn't endorsing no candidate, or anything. and at the last minute she came out pom pom chair leading for Hillary. Jason's doing the same thing, and I thought it was funny because Jason had, he's had beef with uh, everybody obviously, but he's come at the ADOS movement. He he and Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore were going back and forth. It's funny enough because they tried to use against him that he used to be a Republican strategist, which I don't have a problem with anybody. You know their politics is their business. But they try to use that against them, obviously, in their critiques or whatever, because, you know, Jason was going with the rhetoric about ADOS. And I, I'm not defending ADOS at all, as far as Antonio Moore and Nevada Cornell, because they laid their bed and it is what it is. But there's so much misinformation to smoke around the movement and what it really is. It's like, it's hard not to. Like, just like, I don't like Tony of that either, but you're yeah, not going to call ADOS people what we really are not, right? Like, it's bigger than just those two idiots. Um, it's, it's deeper than that. And I will say, I saw O'Shea do an interview with two people who are from there. One was from Los Angeles. And they were far better arbiters of what the movement is about and what they really believe in than to return the event. But that's a different conversation. But Jason Johnson came out with the smoke. He called the island girl, the little girl, Brianna Greyjoy, who got a Game of Thrones name, um, called her a little misfit island. And I, I totally understand what he was saying. She'd be clapping and snapping and flipping on Twitter, talking trash, and then... You know, she kind of got that energy when she goes on TV and does the interviews. And it's like, you know, that, that was her job to do that. That's what she gets paid for. And he, But let's not ignore the fact, because I've seen Crystal Ball posted something. I did respond to the tweet. She's talking about Bernie has, you know, this is dirty. How could you do this to strong women like the Greyjoy chick and Nina Turner? And he was not talking about Nina Turner. There was a segment where he discussed what happened with the segment where he went back and forth with Nina Turner and how this hypocrisy of you calling Bloomberg an oligarch, but you work for a millionaire who got three houses, valid, right? Bernie Sanders is the most famous socialist we've ever seen. It kind of don't add up, right? 
because you got your money. And then when you look at the amount of money he's given away, same thing with Obama when they looked at him. But Obama was broke, so we can't really blame him. But, like, the percentage of his income that he donated away was low. As far as all this liberal socialism redistribution of policies they support, you would think they would be more chill for givers. Bernie and I like it wasn't that cheerful of a giver either. Uh, he gave like three percent of his income too. But um, Jason made a valid point. I, I give credit where credit is due. Like, yo, y'all gotta chill, be quiet. Don't be calling Bloomberg out on his money because y'all gonna need his money eventually. Um, let's flirt with the idea that he's winning in the polls and he has some stuff going on for him that really is just fake. You know what I mean? It's the primaries. It's this thing happens in that particular part of the election. That doesn't mean that person's gonna win, but. Yeah, I got that part. But then that conversation was ended, right? He moved on from Nina Turner to talk about... He didn't say her name either, but we knew who she was talking about, who he was talking about. He was talking about the Grey Dray chick, which I'll show a clip, of a picture of her or whatever she is later on. But that's what it was about, though. And this is, again, and I don't know if I said this again, I'll repeat myself, because I'm not about to go check, but women cannot want to engage in political dialogue. They, do, they cannot want to engage in spaces that are male-dominant. And even Jason Johnson did this bitch ass shit, and because he he said a lot of other dumb things in that clip, he came at Andrew Yang for why is he on CNN working and blah blah blah. His campaign was trash. He sucked. He didn't know what he was doing. Why is he on CNN? He came at Bernie Sanders' white racist supporters, whatever. Which a lot of those people don't get addressed. I, I agree with that. Um, he's not going with the narrative of just Trump supporters are racist, but he's like acknowledging that Bernie Sanders has a problem with race. And that's what I wrote on Crystal Ball's Twitter feed. It's like, yeah, you saying you claim that Bernie Sanders has the most diverse coalition alive, but let's not act like we don't know why Senator, I mean, Simone Sanders, a.k.a. EJ, is no longer on his campaign. She left. She didn't throw smoke at Sanders because she said it was people in the campaign, which is smart because you don't want to lose your job and you can't be talking smash, trash, like the way that Kamala Harris person did she went out and went public and was talking smoke and criticized her which you don't really do that if you want to get hired again but i think that lady did get hired and went over to joe biden's campaign but that's not something you're supposed to do so simone sanders kept it to herself and she just said yo people in the staff that was wilding out with race and gender and we had to go and tesla figaro we know who she is independent she's always on fox news she's often on the breakfast club twice now uh and we see her mostly on Twitter talking and giving her political smoke. She's not no longer with the Bernie Sanders campaign. And there was a settlement involved in that. So as much as you want to act like he's got all these black folks working for him, yes, Bernie has overcorrected the racial female problems he had in 2016 with his campaign. And he admitted there was some wrongdoing and some stuff that he didn't know what the hell he was doing and stuff that went on. So, like, let's not act like that. Like, you're, you're giving him credit for being the most diverse campaign, but he's overcorrecting from his, the problems he had last time. And he got a lot of, as Jason called them, black girls from the islands of misfits to go on TV and to cape and, and push for his policies or whatever. But keep it like that. Keep it a buck. Let's stop with the identity politics bullshit because she don't even subscribe to that. She doesn't, even though she does a clip where I used her face from the clip the interview, she addressed how black folks are disproportionately affected by a lot of these policies from the left. And, you know, the ones that Bloomberg was defending, like redlining and stopping frisk, whatever. So disproportionately, you would have to address us specifically with policy to fix these issues. So she understands that, yet she's one of four candidate that clearly doesn't care about that. He thinks that all rise and tie lifts all boats. If we deal with class, race will follow. But we know that that's not true. We do know, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm repeating myself or not, if you specifically address black people with policy, it helps everybody else. We saw that with affirmative action, white women, midgets, you name it, alphabet people, they all benefit from things that we fought for in 1964. But yeah, I don't like when liberals do this. I don't like when anybody does it, but the left is strong at doing it. If a man and a woman got beef and they going at each other, stop playing the gender card. It's like, stop. Like, stop. Like, don't do that. Like, he was specifically talking to one person, and I'm sure she clapped back at him, but of course she's not going to do that. She's going to play the identity politics, black girl magic card, and then you saw a crystal ball jump in and say, Bernie Sanders is the most diverse campaign. Yes, he corrected his F-ups from last time around. His campaign was trash before when it came to race and it came to gender. And that's when we didn't pay attention to it because we just didn't like crooked-ass Hillary. So he got a pass on a lot of those things. But lawsuits happened. People left campaigns and went to other people. So we can't ignore that that had, 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 has happened. Throwing the little girl up there. Not, not, <laughs> throwing little Joy Gray up there. And, 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 and whatnot does not 
cover up those facts, right? Like, yeah, he, he's corrected, but let, what he had to correct for a reason. He had to get rid of the whole brony bros imagery and all that stuff that's going on in the media. So I, I don't, I'm not mad at him. Like he said a lot of effed up things in that whole clip, but this is the only one that went viral, right? The only thing that mattered and went viral. When he talked about Tulsi Gabbard, he trashed her and the Russian hoax and all this disrespectful stuff to a person who's a member of Congress who got classified information, like you're accusing her of treason in essence, but with, with no proof or no evidence or anything, just talking out your ass, right? That was worse to me what he said than what he said about the little gray jar girl. Like, I think that's way worse. You're accusing a sitting congresswoman who is still serving in the military and has been deployed like three, four times and has highly classified information. And you telling pretty much saying she's a Russian asset and, you know, agreeing with crooked ass Hillary bull. But that's not cool. Um, I, I didn't have a problem with what he said about Kamala Harris either. He's like, yo, the optics of this, this biracial woman who's opting in to be biracial when it's politically convenient for her with her white husband. Talking about, I want to get some black male votes. The objects were bad. And Jason Johnson was correcting that. And all these people responded to him like, she doesn't need a black man. She doesn't need this. She doesn't. She, well, she's at home right now. So maybe J if she would have took Jason's advice, <laughs> she wouldn't be at home right now. No, she was going to be home with guys because black folks was not about to elect the cop. And Amy Klobuchar is going to get her smoke too. She's not going anywhere. Black folks, even if she was the nominee, black folks ain't going to vote for her either because she got her own issues with cop stuff. Again, Elizabeth Warren, don't like her either, not both any Democrat, but she's the only one on that platform that's running. Uh, booty bag, um, he got issues being mayor and firing the first black top cop. He had his situations with black men were four times more likely to get arrested for marijuana under his leadership. All types of stuff, bad. And McClumishar, a 16-year-old kid, didn't do it. On trial, new information, a lot of bribes and stuff like that. On tape, she ain't do nothing about it to fix it. Now she claims that she wants something done. Um, Biden, who had the mitigated motherfucking call to come at Bloomberg for stopping Fred's when you signed a 94 crime bill. Bernie Sanders voted for it twice, um, supported it, got behind it, admitted it wasn't perfect, but didn't care, un unintended consequences, whatever. If it's going to destroy black families and break up black households, he ain't care because he looks at class. He don't look at race. And then you have Bloomberg with Stop and Frisk, beat him against the wall, and blah, blah, blah. All of them have issues with dealing with race and justice system, when particularly that affects black men. For Ironically enough, Elizabeth Warren is the only one who does not have her hands dirty on that issue. Still won't vote for her, but it would make sense if black people, criminal justice is important to us and things of that nature, and not about the whole electability argument. They would probably side with her. She might get some more steam with black folks if... I worked for Great Joy. No, if I worked for her team, I would voice that. Like, yo, all the other candidates, when it comes to criminal justice reform, when it comes to black people in the justice system, they've all screwed black people over, particularly black men. Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas, not me, not her. You know what I mean? At least, that's just my video. I ain't had no problem with Jason Johnson. I don't like how the media does this. I don't like how the left does this. They're in their feelings. Um, I do think his attacks on Bernie Sanders are heightened and into it's more of the establishment thing going on. I do. But... Stop doing this. If women want respect to be in a political game, you know, they want to shoot and talk trash to men and pop off the same way Nina Turner had no problem popping off at Jason and using all that energy. When somebody comes back at you, like, don't be trying to dissect his words and, and misogyny or like, that's just, people will not respect you when you do that. I say when you see Amy Clomager and uh, I'm a woman and people have been telling me to wait my turn and stop and blah, blah, blah. You're up on the debate stage. You beat a lot of men out and you're still there. Stop doing that shit because eventually... People are going to just look you like you're stupid and like, yo, can you deliver the policy that one or not? You can't? All right, then go home. Man, ain't got nothing to do with your gender. And they're doing that with Elizabeth Warren. I keep all the people saying, because of the point I just made about her not having her hands dirty when it comes to the justice system with black men in particular, they're saying, well, she should be winning because she's a man. Like, no, she fudged up. She fudged up with the Medicare fraud thing. She fudged up acting like this real progressive stuff, which she did do in the past. And some stuff she tried to get done during the Obama administration that could not get done because they're centrist and they don't they're not progressives. She plays both sides and she's a she's she tried to get into the Bernie bag and she messed up by her little kerfuffle over Medicare for all. How she's gonna pay for it? Yes, she gonna raise some damn taxes. She didn't want to admit that. Bernie doesn't care, he admit that. And one thing on the side too, and I'll probably just do my breakdown of how I think about Bernie Sanders. Is like, yo, he's talking about, I've always felt this way too, like, usually, like, we want $15 minimum wage, whatever, that's about $31,000, $32,000 a year, 
And then, like, you do the math, like, his plan for all the free shit that he thinks should be a human right, and that's, you're going to be placed in a tax bracket to where the government's going to take more of your money. So, yeah, you won't have to worry about health care, but half your income is going to be gone. I don't know if that's 52% for people who make that specific money, but you will be pushed out of a different, you'll be pushed in a new tax bracket. And we know that how that works. Like, there are people who aren't getting married on purpose because they didn't, because I know white couples who did not get married during Obama's administration because of Obamacare and their incomes combined. It was cheaper for them to pay child support and live together than to get married and file together or separately. Like, and I'm saying these are the type of funny, dumb things that Democratic policy push. I'm not saying that Republicans aren't right when they try to force or incentivize marriage. That's what the Bush administration had to do to give benefits and tax breaks and kickbacks to people and marriages, but whatever. But on the flip side, a lot of liberal policies kind of make it easier for people to just shack up, live together, and not file as a married couple because you make that income, combine the income, it'll put you in a different tax bracket and then you won't get as much money back that you should get back of your own money that the government takes from you tax-free. And y'all call it a refund? Nope. They just took your money for a year with no interest and they gave it back at the end of the year with no interest. And the more they give you back means the more they took during the year that you could have had and you could have paid for all the shit that you think that Bernie Sanders is going to give you for free. That's my rant. That's my video. Jason Johnson is a dickhead, but the media is overreacting with the little black girl misfit thing. But they're going to run with the black girl magic thing. It's going to help. It's going to work. They're trying to get him fired off MSNBC. But again, he said way worse, more incendiary things than this. But he came at black girl magic. So they're going to unite like Voltron on Twitter and try to get the man fired. I don't do the cancel culture thing. But it's funny to see. I do love the infighting, though. I do love the fact that these liberals are cannibalizing each other and concessions are being made and all these black politicians that have conveniently got donations from Bloomberg's campaign are out here tap dancing for Bloomberg. <laughs> that shit is hilarious. Y'all can't say shit to black Trump supporters. Like, y'all can't say nothing to them. The fact that y'all are actually taking Mr. Stop and Frisk, Mr. Red Lighting, you know, half of black wealth was wiped out during that era, and you blame black people for that situation. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy that y'all really take this man serious. I can understand politically wanting to take his money to use to so-called beat Trump. But to actually endorse him and, and get behind him like a lot of these black mayors have done, y'all going to take an L, man. Y'all taking an L. Y'all can't say shit to Trump supporters. I'm out. Oh, anyways, before I was so rudely interrupted. But um, that's Brianna Greyjoy. That's the chick that Jason Johnson was talking about. She's been one of his biggest young, new, spicy, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters who, you know, when it comes to giving the smoke and stuff like that, she does do her thing. She's the I, close to the Amorosa of his campaign. He got him a nice little, you know, feisty one out there. And I don't like, though, what they're doing in the media and how they play this game. He said what he said. Again, I'm not a fan of the guy at all, but let's just be consistent. I don't like when people do this in the media. I don't like it even when it's black YouTube conversations. A rapper says something like... You know, even when Snoop, which I didn't agree with what he did anyways, but Snoop with Gayle King became a reflection. That's why we got to be careful as black men of our image and how we talk and how we communicate. And even though I don't think, I mean, Jason had to throw in a black girl word, and I already knew that was going to trigger. But we got to be careful how we say things because it's so easy for the media to flip it and make us to be these monsters. We already know hashtag root articles, Ebony Essence, The View, The Grill, Black Voices, you name it. You know, we are, our image is already tarnished, tarnished there as it is, and we make it easier. You see, I'm about to try to do a video about Snoop Dogg, about to go on Red Table Talk. Red Table Talk is basically when black men F up and piss off mainstream media, that's where they go to apologize and get their bread back up. But um, that's just my video. Like uh, Jason Johnson said a lot of incendiary, disgusting things in that, in that interview with Karen Hunter. He came at, you know, Andrew Yang, which I agree with his point, but he was like, why is he getting a job on CNN? Like, he has no, his campaign fell. He he made up, he basically hijacked Dr. King's, um, uh, you know, paying people that money every month. Like, that, that's some old stuff from 1960. He just jacked it and ran with that one policy, and that was it. He, he just tore him down. It was like, yo, you shouldn't be on TV. You don't know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. He said a lot of stuff in that, in that clip. But the only one that went viral, the only thing that went, you know, uh, was when he came at, Greyjoy. It's just like when he was going back and forth for sitting in the Turner, that that and that whole segment, the only thing that went viral was that he came back at her because she caught Bloomberg oligarch, which he is 
technically. But again, I understood he was making a point politically. Y'all gonna need some of his money eventually, and it doesn't make sense. And then a lot of people who are just confused about what's going on, they hopping from you know pause candidate to candidate. Is like I've seen people that like jumped on the Bloomberg bandwagon because he has money. He can, you know, he's trying to. He's done some things tangible, like he's gotten some red states flipped. He's gotten some gun control shit done, which I dislike absolutely. But I'm saying they're they're looking at the things he's done as tangible, and they're trying to circumvent all the bad shit that he's done as well. You can't do that. You have to take the good with the bad. And I, to be honest, not that I'm voting for any Democrat, but Elizabeth Warren, when it comes to black people, right? When it comes to black people, out of all the people that's left up there, Amy Klobuchar was a prosecutor. Some dude, some young dude could have been innocent and her office didn't do anything to bring new evidence, whatever. So when it comes to criminal justice with black people, you got Bernie who signed the crime bill. I mean, voted for the crime bill twice. You got Joe Biden who wrote it, which I don't know, understand how he even had to mitigate a gall to come at bitch out of Bloomberg and to stop and frisk, which he took a policy that was already there and he made it worse. It was 10 times worse than what it was when the uh, Giuliani had it. So... All of them up there have had policy or been connected to policy that's been bad for black people, black men in particular, except for Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and a lot of the progressives or whatever turned against her because she was she fumbled the Medicare for She tried to separate herself from Bernie, and she didn't want to acknowledge that, you know, Medicare for all is trash because it is. And she didn't want to admit how she was going to pay for her plan, which that messed her up a lot. So people were just like, yo, she don't even know what she's doing. She's got a plan for everything, but a solution for nothing. But in regards to black people, it wouldn't make sense, even though people might not think she can win electability. They think Trump might have a field day with her and all that other stuff. As far as criminal justice in that context, she's the only one up there that doesn't have her dirt on her hands, literally. All the rest of them, in some way, shape, or form, whether they've been prosecutors in the past, Mayor Booty Butt, whatever, he fired the first black police chief, a black unarmed person got killed, and he didn't handle it well in his office. And none of the people who got, um, you know, black people were four times more likely to get stopped and arrested for marijuana possessions than their white counterpart. All that stuff has been affected, all of them. So, it is true. What I don't like, though, is how everybody keeps saying the reason why Elizabeth Warren isn't winning is because she's a woman. And I'm like, that's stupid. Like, y'all can't keep having that argument in 2020 when y'all all boast about how Hillary had the popular vote, blah, 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 which means absolutely nothing. Saying you want the popular vote is like saying we had more yards, but you still lost, motherfucker, Right? But don't say that, you know, Hillary has 2,000 more votes and nobody will vote for woman when she won the popular vote. So why couldn't Warren win the popular vote as well? Like, what are we talking about here? Like, no, people don't like her because they feel like she's 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 fake. She, she tried to fake her way as this, this progressive person, but she's really not that person. And people are falling back from her because they want somebody like Bernie who's been consistent with his bullshit socialism for the last 40 years. And he's been in the Senate or whatever for like over 40 years. And he's only gotten literally out of seven bills passed, two of them was renaming uh, a library or some shit like that. Like, now he's done some good things, I guess you could say is good, you know. I'm talking about bills he put forth himself and that he got passed. Not bills he co signed or whatever, co sponsored, but his own bills. Been there forever, got. Seven done, and and five out of the seven were decent. But Elizabeth Warren, who's been there in the less, less time, has gotten more things done, tried to do things, even in Obama's administration that was, like, progressive and liberal and all that weird shit, that she couldn't get done because of Obama administration pushed back. So, I don't know. I love this political season. I love it. I love the smoke. I love the infighting. I just had to step in, though, and say, because I see Twitter going crazy. I see the Jason Johnson smoke is coming at, at all time high. I think this is what he's supposed to do. This is his job. If he gets paid to do that. But stop tagging him in the entire gender and when a person has beef with each other. Women can women will not get respect in male-dominated spaces as if every time someone calls them out or challenges them or, or attacks them politically then they got to fall back and cry about their gender or, or their race. Like, you can't keep doing that. Nobody's going to respect you. That's the reason why people like Senator Nina Turner is because she had smoke and she had clapbacks, and she didn't do that, but now she's jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, Jason should be careful when he comes for us. He specifically stopped talking about y'all beef that y'all had when you called Bloomberg an oligarch, and he defended the reality of not doing that publicly because you're going to need his money eventually. He moved off of that and started talking about the little Game of Thrones name chick right here. And you 
and again, there's a whole feed on Twitter. And again, I saw a crystal ball from the hill up there talking about the Bernie has the most diverse blah blah blah. Don't I got? I'm trying to respond to that comment because it's on the thread of her. I want to respond specifically to that comment on Twitter because I'm like, don't act like Bernie didn't have a problem with race, and he still does. Bernie chooses class over race. He doesn't want to address race. He wants to address class. He thinks that it's just one fix off. He fix class to address race. We know it's black people. That's not right. You got to do specific things because black people were specifically targeted to be hurt by certain policies that Bloomberg defended, redlining, and so forth. And you're going to have to have specific policies to target to undo those things. Bernie Sanders does not believe in that. And the same way Trump plays and flirts with, you know, white people who, you know, tiki torch motherfuckers, it's the same way Bernie Sanders will not go against his own base and do identity politics or do specifically things that address black people because his base does not believe in that. They believe in the whole... You know, whatever this rising ties, let's fall both type of thing. We do this one thing on red class, everybody will be helped out. We know as black folks that does not work. We do know that when you do specifically help black people, everybody else gets benefited from that, whether it's civil rights or whatever, and how white women and mentally disabled people, people who weren't supposed to be on that bill, got to take advantage of it. Affirmative action, things of that other nature, other groups come here and take benefits of the things that black people fall for. We know that's true. But that's my video. I'm out. Why are they showing this little Indian? <laughs> I'm out.